Now, there's also a physical component to our lives that are, are causing us a little bit of um, feeling of chaos and feeling like we can't get anything done. Now, it could be your workspace, it could be your office, it could be you know your home in general, it could be the junk drawer, where you open up the junk drawer and it's this energy suck. You don't know why, but you always are drawn to this pile of paper that's on your desk that needs to be organized. But of course, you end up doing five or 10 minutes of that instead of what you're truly wanting to do. So how do you make, um, let me give you five steps for better spaces. So write down and decide the functions of each room in your house or the functions of each area of your office space. If you have if, if you have an office or workspace so you know have a space where okay this is my where my new work goes this is where I'm gonna file the information that I need on a daily basis these are the files that will go because I probably won't need them this week but at some point this project may be called back um, into relevancy again or I may need some of this research that I had done for another project whatever so decide on the space in your home um, decide what you're going to do. So I'll give you an example. So a client had a guest bedroom that um, was basically upstairs and she had a desk in there with her computer and every day she would take all the papers from downstairs and on her way to bed she would drop the papers on the desk in this guest room. So you can imagine after a few months what this guest room looked like. It was to the point where she couldn't have guests because it was such a big mess. Now when you asked her where she actually did some of her office and her administrative stuff for her household, she said at the kitchen table. So most times her laptop was down there. She paid bills online. She um, did her work um, that she brought home from work there. She did all the registering for their kids things there. So the only thing she really needed in this space upstairs was maybe a filing cabinet to keep pertinent information. So tax documents, you know, the things that you need to refer to, the, need, the things that you need to get, gather at some point. But she had no real filing system. So if you have, if you're figuring out that your space is, um, is not really what the function of that space, then change it. So maybe it even, it's even useful to have a filing cabinet down by your kitchen, maybe someplace out of the way, maybe utilizing one of the cupboard spaces to have, um, to have files there instead of pots. So make sure you decide the function of each room and then change it so that you're the most effective um, person with those spaces. So instead of making all this clutter in a space that you don't really use, you are paying that um, bill and you're recycling it or you're get opening up a tax document and you're filing it and all of a sudden it's done in two to three seconds and that's it. That's all you have to do. It's, it's a huge, huge amount of space and time um, saved. The other thing that I ask you to do is do a realtor open house test. So when you go to sell your house, a realtor will say, okay, you know, open the front door, look in and see what you see. Now, is this a space that is welcoming, that looks spacious, that feels like, oh yes, I would love to live here. Now, if there's pieces of clutter, then you can work and, and get rid of each of those areas. In the kitchen, a realtor will tell you, get rid of 40% of the stuff that you have in here. And I've done this, put it, you know, a little, a uh, couple boxes upstairs in the attic. And surprisingly, six weeks later, there was only maybe one or two things that I actually missed. So you'll realize that the 40% that, you know, you thought the little gadget that was specific for some function, but you've never used. A lot of times you can get away with a cutting board, you know, a few pots and pans, some ni good knives and, you know, a good frying pan. And pretty soon you're, you know, there isn't, there is a lot more space than you thought that you could, that you could actually um, deal with. So that's a really good way of kind of testing the sum of the stuff that you have, of getting rid of the clutter you have. And there are three questions that I want you to, to um, decide. Now, a lot of times our physical clutter, we have an emotional connection with this physical clutter. 
So, and I'll, I'll tell you why, because when we own something, it's in our nature to kind of place some sort of sentimental value on it. Maybe you remember the place you bought it or who gave it to you or, you know, how it made you feel or it was a certain chapter in your life that may not serve any purpose for you now, but you hold an emotional attachment to it for some reason. Now, here are three questions that you can ask that can help you get rid of some of these things that no longer serve you. Now, this was taken from um, Julie Cub Culbertson's um, The Clutter Cure. Um, and she's got some great, a ton of great ideas, but these, these are the three questions that she poses. How will this item make my life better? And if you can't answer that, it probably needs to be recycled, given away, or thrown in the garbage. Um, if it were lost in a fire or flood, would I replace it? Now, that is a great question. Um, would you replace it if it was somehow destroyed? And a lot of times that can give you the answer that you need to get rid of something that you're sort of hanging on to for no real particular reason. And the third one, is there a reasonable way to reuse it or recycle it? So sometimes, you know, you can use... Um, a great example, one of the organizing magazines lately, I was flipping through it, was magazine little holders. Um, one of the designers put the magazine holders in the linen closet and rolled up the, tea the, the hand towels and put them in there as, and stacked them three on top of each other. So it's reusing something that you have and making yourself, your spaces more organized. So the only thing that I caution with this is that sometimes, you know, we, we are given something like a piece of furniture or something as a gift and we think, ah, oh, you know, if I restain this or if I repaint it in some way or if I fix the leg on it or something and then it stays in your garage for four months and you haven't touched it, sometimes we have the best intentions to reuse or recycle something, change it in some way to make it right. But if we haven't done it, and it sits there, it is, it is physical clutter that causes us to be less productive. So you have to ask yourself, am I realistically in the next six weeks going to do this project and make this item useful? If you can't say yes to that, then it might be um, a good thing to give it away or recycle it. All right, give it to Goodwill. There are tons of people that would love um, what you are no longer using. So those are a quick, quick minute. Um, thanks, for, thanks for listening. And if you need more information about any of the talks that are coming up for me, um, please check out www.inspireempire.com. Talk to you soon.